what's going on everybody welcome back into the channel today we're going to be going over bo katan i'm just going to go over my initial thoughts talk about the cards that currently are revealed that can work with her also cards from the first set because there are a couple that can work with her and her ability and then also compare to a few of the leaders in set one and see where she kind of ranks up against them i'll probably end up going over all the leaders but some of them faster than others because i have some points i want to get to with how I feel about bo -Katan. Now, with that being said, you know, there's gonna be a lot more reveals and probably things that are going to make bo a lot better because obviously there's not a ton of Mandalorian units out to utilize her ability, but as things come out, she'll probably, you know, see an increase in viability. But my initial thoughts on her ability is just what I'm gonna be going over right now, right? So obviously bo -Katan, for an action, if you had attacked with a Mandalorian this phase, you can deal one damage to a unit. I low-key wish it said deal one damage to a base, but that might have made her a little bit crazy. But not really. I don't know. I just feel like if it was dealing one damage to a base, I feel like that would fit the aggression color more. But dealing one damage to a unit is interesting because you can go ahead and start pinging off your opponent's units slowly and making it so maybe they don't want to swing it to your units as much which aggression that might be a problem and it costs well, that doesn't cost but it, it requires you to have six resources to use her epic action so that's all right and then she comes out and she's a four seven and then on attack you may deal one damage to a unit if you had attacked with a mandalorian unit this phase you may deal damage to an, an, a unit as well and that could end up being the same unit or another unit so if you're using a full-on Mandalorian deck, which I do feel like a lot of people are going to do, this set's going to have a ton of Mandalorians, and people love Mandalorians. So if you plan on making a, an aggression Mandalorian deck, this might be your leader. I just feel like I kind of wish it was base instead of unit, just to keep up that speed. If it was base instead of unit, I think that she would be so incredibly good. But maybe that might have been it. It might have been too broken if they had done that way, right? But still, being able to hit units with one damage is okay but it requires you to attack with a mandalorian and if your opponent is slowing you down by killing your mandalorians off each turn then you're not gonna be able to use this ability and it just kind of feels kind of bad right with vader i'm gonna compare it to vader right now i'm not gonna go into the full comparison between the two vader all you have to do is play a villainy unit to deal one damage to a unit so it could be enemy or or your own obviously same as bo katan but you can also deal one damage to your opponent's base and that is big and that's where i kind of feel like this kind of falls off right but with that being said let's talk about a couple of cards in the first set that this kind of goes with already right you have sabine ren mandalorian so it goes with the ability and then obviously you know that when it's three aspects amongst your units it cannot be targeted by attacks which is pretty good keeping it on board and then on attack you may deal one damage to a defender or to a base now with that being said you're starting to see the Mandalorians, right, with Sabine. You can attack with her. You can deal an extra damage to the defender that you're attacking or to a base. And bo is dealing damage to units as well as Mandalorians are attacking. So that might be kind of the vibe they're going with with Mandalorians, kind of spreading out a ton of damage and stuff like that. So there's that. And from the, another card for set one, you have the Disabling Fang Fighter. This might now see more play. I feel like when I've seen it, it's been in sideboard kind of to deal with entrench and stuff like that. But now people might start playing Disabling Fang Fighter in their main board in a deck like this that's focused more about uh, more around Mandalorians. So when play to defeat an upgrade so you can defeat a shield, you know, an experience token and trench on one of your own units. If your opponent has a Jedi lightsaber, pop that thing off because Grogu's going to be running around with those things like a baby on steroids. So pop that stuff. But still, you're going to see more play in Disabling Fang Fighter, I think. And so this also does trigger bo ability as well. The cards that were released, uh, not released, but revealed from the new set, you have Follower of the Way, which while it's equipped with an upgrade, it gets plus one, plus one, you know. So not only is he getting powered up by that upgrade you're putting on him, you can go ahead and get a power up from his ability as well. You can put on Infiltrator skill to give it plus two, plus two at that point. And he'll become a 3-5 with Saboteur, making it so you can keep up the speed in blue on a smaller unit like that, right? So you're you're playing the Follower of the Way and you're playing Infiltrator Skill for one. It's making it pretty strong and being able to swing over Sentinels is pretty good, right? And then you have the Razor Crest that has Restore 2, so it's able to kind of keep you alive 
and then when played return an upgrade from your discard pile to your hand so if you lose an upgrade that you want to keep using bring it back to your hand when you play this card and you can go ahead and attach it to another unit and stuff like that it's interesting the mandalorian you know style right it seems like they want to use a lot of upgrades and stuff like that when you're playing with blue so that seems to be that and then you have the legendary mandalorian it is really good it heals all damage off of a two or unit that costs two or less and it gives it two shield really really strong it's able to basically keep maybe follower of the way if you have an upgrade on it and it's really strong and then your opponent's really close to taking it out you drop down mandalorian you not only heal it up completely but you give it two shields which is absolutely bonkers to keep your powered up small units on the board and that seems to be what you want to do with Bo-Katan, right? It seems like there's, I, I have a feeling there's going to be a ton of small costing Mandalorians, maybe in blue and red. And maybe you're just going to want to flood the board with a bunch of Mandalorians, maybe pop on some upgrades and stuff like that, and kind of go that route. And then use Bo-Katan to swing, deal damage across the board to, you know, take care of some of those other units, maybe some Sentinels on the other side. And it seems like that's going to be the way. Now, is this going to be one of the top aggression decks? I'm going to start talking about where I kind of put it compared to other leaders in aggression that we currently have. And obviously, I'm going to go over this one quickly. We have IG-88. IG-88 is not great. It might get some help in the next set. But the fact that it comes out on five and it dies to two events that, well, yeah, it dies to two events that cost less than five that are played in a lot of decks right open fire and takedown kind of makes it kind of rough right but i just i think that bogotan is going to have more play than ig88 maybe ig88 gets the support it needs i just don't think ig88 is there ig88 might be a little bit faster because it does give other units that you control raid one so it keeps up that speed in terms of damage but keeping ig88 on the board is the problem at the moment so it doesn't last long right but ig88 cool character not great I think uh, Bo-Katan is obviously better than IG-88 leader, right? Now going into the next leader with Grand Inquisitor, I think the comparison is that I don't think Grand Inquisitor is at his highest power level at the moment, right? Um, we know that there are going to be a ton more grit units in the next set, and I think that Grand Inquisitor is also going to get better, but where it sits, I do think Bo-Katan is probably better than current Grand Inquisitor. That being said, again, there are going to be more grit units. There were already grit units uh, released. And I'll go over that. I think I'll do a video on Grand Inquisitor and the increase that he might see. Because I think that playing blue Grand Inquisitor with grit units is where he's going to shine. And the Grand Inquisitor has some fun mechanics with the fact that he can hurt his own units to re-ready them if they have three power or less. So it helps him with the speed. So I do think that he will be a faster leader than... Bokatan also when you add in those great units they get stronger as they get hit and you can do some really fun things with it but I think that there are some tough matchups for Grand Inquisitor which is why I rank him lower than the potential of Bokatan currently and again he will get better this is just a current initial thought of where I feel like Bokatan is Cassian I think Cassian and Bokatan are good comparisons in the fact they're both aggression and they both cost six for their epic action, right? They both require you to have six resources. And this is where I want to get my main bulk of the talking with when it comes to this. Because I play a ton of Cassian, right? I play Cassian more than any other leader in the game. Just because I like the card, the draw power, and his ability when he's a leader unit with Saboteur definitely helps as well. So, like, I just like the way it feels to play. But sometimes when I'm playing Cassian, I feel like as for an aggression deck, it's not as fast as I would want it to be. As you're losing your units turn after turn after turn, waiting till six to flip your leader with aggression uh, leaders is a little bit rough. And the reason I'm saying that is that by the time you get to the six resources and you flip Cassian, you might not have much left on the board. Um, and not only that though, your opponent has six resources or more, depending on what they're playing, they could have ramped to get more and they can easily deal with Cassie and making it so you can really only pop off with his ability once, get four damage in on the base and draw a card. It feels bad sometimes. So I tend to run Cassie in double red. Now, with that being said, 
are you going to want to do that with Bo-Katan? It seems like a lot of the Mandalorians are going to end up being in Vigilance, but I do think that they're going to probably maybe, you know, the Death Watch and stuff like that might be released in this set and be more aggression. But are they going to be villainy Mandalorians? You know what I mean? So it's a back and forth here. I think that Cassian having the ability Saboteur makes it makes up for the fact that he comes out on six and kind of slows down the game for aggression because then you can kind of, you know, still swing over your opponent's units if he's putting down Sentinels to slow you down. Whereas Bo-Katan doesn't have that ability of Saboteur. So I don't think that she's as fast as Cassian, even though they come out on six resources each, right? I think that as more cards are released, we can get a better understanding of how you want to play Bo-Katan. But from what I'm seeing, the best way to play might be trying to get out small costing Mandalorian units, flood the board, and just try to swing out with a ton of them, and then use Bo-Katan to deal out a couple damage here and there to an opponent uh, unit and stuff like that. So that kind of feels interesting to me. I just feel like at least for where it stands i think cassian is a better option for the six costing aggression leading leaders between the two of them because of the amount of rebels we have revealed and you know options we have to us right the rebel engine having so much speed with fleet lieutenant and stuff like that just gives cassian that ability to still be viable even at six resources now are they going to reveal a mandalorian card that on play you get to attack with a mandalorian and do plus two attack I wouldn't be surprised they might be giving out some events that also do that right attack with a mandalorian give plus whatever right or give overwhelm making it so you can go ahead and give okatan overwhelm swing into a unit deal damage to the base and then go ahead and deal two damage to another unit potentially you know those can be cards that we can see but as of right now uh, my initial thought process here is that cassian is a little bit better but that's solely because of the cards that we already have and that's not to take away from Bo-Katan and her ability to potentially get better, right? Now we're going in and I'm going to compare her to Darth Vader. The reason I'm going to compare her to Darth Vader is they have similar abilities because they deal damage to opposing units or, you know, your own units, right? That being said, right, Vader's ability is so much better. And I understand he comes out on seven, but still the ability to deal damage to your opponent's base and a unit is crazy and it only requires you to play a villainy card that turn and it does require you to spend one so that's why it makes up for it right you're spending one to do this ability but the fact that you have to attack with a mandalorian to use bo ability is kind of scary to me because you're playing against certain decks that are just going to go ahead and take out your mandalorians as you put them on the board early game you're not going to be able to use bo ability unless they reveal you know a couple one cost mandalorians which i could see them doing so you can get a couple mandalorians on the board and then to guarantee that you can attack with them the second turn right but with that being said i think darth vader's ability is just better and then also when he comes out it's just on attack deal two damage to a unit now he can't split it up which is pretty good because bo -Katan, one of her main things i think that's going to make her her viable is the fact that she can pop shields right you can attack into something uh, you can attack with a Mandalorian into the base and you can attack with Bo-Katan into the base maybe or into a unit and then pop two shields, right? If they have shields on two separate units, pop each shield, right? That's going to be your goal because your opponent's most likely going to use those shields to pop your own units. Bo-Katan is going to see the value in popping shields, in my opinion, to kind of slow down your opponent's ability to take out your units while keeping theirs on the board. That's just my initial thought, right? But with that being said, Bo-Katan requiring you to swing with another unit and then a swing with her to get the two damage slows down the aggression of Bo-Katan. Now, Vader being able to just attack and freely do two damage to a unit is just a little bit faster, but you don't get to split it up. So you can, you're not popping multiple shields. But I still think that Vader, right? Vader is top meta for a reason. He works so well in control. Obviously, people are playing him with blue, and he's also really good in green as well getting that ramp so i do think that darth vader will continue to be better than bo -Katan, but only time will tell it's just my initial thought i think that his ability not having as strenuous amount of requirements to get it right just playing a villainy card 
and then paying one is easier to get off potentially than just swinging with a Mandalorian if you're not getting the initiative that much with Bo-Katan, right? Next, I'm going to compare her to the other Mandalorian aggression leader, and I don't think that she compares to Sabine. Sabine, obviously, she's so fast. She comes out on four, making it so even if your opponent is, you know, popping each of your units each turn, once you get to four resources, you start to kind of get the units onto the board because their attention shifts towards Sabine and it gives you more ability to play out multiple units a turn because now they have to kind of deal with that because when she attacks, she's dealing damage into the base. Also, her action to deal damage to both bases, yes, you're taking damage into your own base, but you're consistently getting damage into your opponent's base, which is where I kind of wish bo did. If it was Attack with a Mandalorian, pop into your opponent's base, that would have been crazy, right? She would have been so good, but that's where Sabine is better. She's consistently dealing damage into your opponent's base. Also, she coming out on four, keeps up with that momentum. She is one of the fastest, if not the fastest deck in the current format. And I don't think that's going to stop as more cards are released. I do think that Sabine will continue to run more of a rebel build, but it also depends on the Mandalorian cards coming out. Like I stated before, if there are events for Mandalorians that, you know, make it so you can attack and get fucked up for your Mandalorian units, or, you know, they get a fleet lieutenant type of card for Mandalorian, you can see a shift there. But I still think that when it comes down to it, Sabine is just going to be better. She's just so fast coming out on four. You can't really, you know, get around it. And yes, she dies to a takedown. But sometimes on turn four, I do like to play out General Dodona and then bring out Sabine where it makes it so she has six HP and they have to deal with the donut before they can take down my Sabine and kind of go that route, right? But everything and taking all that into consideration, I still think that bo has potential. As more things get released, you know, I think that she could be a ton of fun, especially because like, you know, a lot of Mandalorian, Mandalorians are just cool, right? So bo I think that she has a ton of potential to get to a level that she could be really viable. Now, I think that Vader and Sabine are easily higher ranked and they're probably going to stay that way into set two, right? That's my opinion. I still think they're going to be higher. Depending on what Mandalorian support she has, I think that she can be on par with Cassian, right? I think that she's going to be better than Grand Inquisitor and I think that she's going to be better than IG-88. Now, where she falls as far as Cassian goes, that is neither here nor there. We're going to have to see as things get released. I think that my final statements on uh, bo right? I think that she's going to be incredibly good at dealing with shielded opponents, right? Being able to, as I alluded to earlier, the ability to split up the two damage is really good. So if you're playing against an opponent that is starting to shield up a ton of things, like if you're going up against Mando, and he's, you know, giving shields to Grogu or giving shields out using events and stuff like that. Or you're playing up against a force deck and using this as the way and getting shields and just, you know, moment of peace and stuff like that. Her ability to just go ahead and swing and hit different targets with one damage to pop out shields with just an attack rather than using an event can make her extremely viable. Because then it's going to make your opponent weary of swinging their units into your units because they're not going to have those shields to protect them. So... I think when it comes to dealing with shields, she gets a check, right? That makes her extremely good. I think that her ability, the requirement of having a Mandalorian attack and dealing damage to a unit, I think that if they have done the base, it would have been a lot better. Dealing damage to a unit, we'll see how that plays out. I just think that they had more potential if they went with the base over the unit. Could be good, again, to help deal with more shields or maybe popping off things that are just barely hanging on. So we'll see how that one plays out. Overall, I like the idea of bo right? Her coming out on six, she's a four, seven. It makes sense. Makes me kind of wonder why does Boba Fett come out on five, uh, five if bo is coming out on six, but whatever. I think she has potential. We'll see how more things coming out and revealed kind of increase her playability and maybe make her more strong and fast and we'll go over that as more cards come out but that's just my initial thought of bo -Katan. i think that she has potential i think she's okay right now but as more things come out i think that you can really start to see where she can shine and you can start seeing like full-on mandalorian decks built 
guys. I had to just go ahead and add this part of the video in. I had already recorded this a couple of days ago while I was editing. There were a new Mandalorian cards announced. And so obviously, as I was talking about, as new Mandalorian cards came out, Bo-Katan was going to get better. So let's go over these new, there were three new Mandalorian cards announced today. We have the Clan Challengers, which is really cool. It is a five cost, so maybe a little bit costly, but it has raid three and has overwhelm. So it's for five. It can deal out six damage and overwhelm. That's pretty good in my opinion. I think that it'll make sure that it allows the Mandalorian deck to continue to kind of control the board using Bo-Katan's ability to ping things and deal out some damage, maybe take out some shields, and then using this to kind of finish them off and still getting damage into the base. So that's already making Bo-Katan a little bit better. Next, we have Ketsu Anyo. He is a saboteur. When he deals combat damage, he to a base, he gets to defeat an upgrade that costs two or less. So that's really good. You can go ahead and kind of take out, you know, maybe an Electro Staff or something like that. Like being able to take out unit uh upgrades on stuff is pretty good if something gets entrenched on your side this is a good way to go ahead and get rid of it as well as long as you're doing damage to the base and it has saboteur so you don't have to worry about the sentinels being in front of it but also as a two drop three two it's actually dealing out pretty good damage and having two hp isn't too terrible for a two drop with three power so this is a very solid card again another mandalorian card that'll add to the aggression part of the uh bo -Katan. and so again you're already seeing bo -Katan get a little bit better and then the final mandalorian card that was showed today we have the night owl skirmisher it is a three drop four three so it's actually pretty strong for a three drop and you can play it it just has the ability with smuggle you just play it for five as a, out of the resource pile but still like the night owl for three being a four three it's actually quite strong and these are just three different mandalorian cards that are already making it so i feel like bo -Katan is getting a little bit better with more mandalorian support and she again is just going to keep on getting better and better so we'll see how this continues to go do i still think that do i think she's better than Darth vader sabine at this point no I still might rank Cassian above still because of the rebel, you know, engine that he has and the speed that he can get through the red, uh, the rebels. But I think that she could potentially challenge for that spot of Cassian, right? I think that she might overtake him as more Mandalorian cards come out. But with that being said, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and hearing my thoughts on Bo-Katan and I'll see you guys on the next video.